So hello everyone and my name is Kelly and I'm the development manager for Relate NI and I am delighted to introduce you uh, today to Dr Paula Hall. She's a renowned psychosexual therapist and we are very excited about a new partnership we have developed with Pivotal Recovery. So Paula, straight over to you, can you tell us a bit about your work with compulsive behaviours around pornography or porn addiction? And I know there's some conversation around what we call it, but feel free to elaborate. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I've been a therapist for nearly 30 years now. Started in drug and alcohol work and then started working for, for Relate. Um, still some of the best training around as far as I'm concerned and went on and became a sex therapist. Gosh, it must be about over 20 years ago. Um, started specialising in sex and porn addiction probably about 18 years ago now. Um, it was a very, very kind of new thing, but I was, I was just beginning to see more and more clients that were, were struggling with these compulsive behaviours. Um, back then, we didn't really have a label for it. We didn't have much understanding. Um, so I did, um, did some training initially in the States with Patrick Carnes and then we came back over to the UK. And actually, that's when we set up ATSAC, which is the professional body in the UK for people struggling with sex and porn addiction and developed our own training. So we now have accredited diploma level training available in the UK um, and very much based on a sex from a kind of um, sex therapy background. So really merging the disciplines of sex therapy and addiction. And of course, that's what's really tricky in this field, because this is certainly about sex. Um, but this is certainly also about addiction. So it's really important to kind of understand how those two things interplay. Um, and yeah, I mean, what, what can I what can I say? Business is booming. This is a massively growing problem. Um, the academics are still arguing over whether or not this is uh, an impulse control disorder or is it best understood as a compulsivity? Is it best understood in the, as a behavioral addiction? Tons and tons and tons of research going on around that. But in the meantime, as far as the general public are concerned, the term porn addiction or sex addiction is is what is kind of banded about. So being a client facing organisation, I think it's really important that we use the language that our, our clients or patients use when they're when they're trying to find services. And more and more people are undoubtedly are desperately trying to find help for this. Yeah. And do you think, um, I suppose, with the rise of kind of smartphones or the rise of the use of the Internet, that, you know, our, the accessibility of pornography is leading to that compulsive behaviour? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There, there's something known as the triple A engine. Um, I think it was a guy called Eli Coleman some years ago came up with this. Might have got that wrong, though, so apologies. Um, and what he said, this triple A engine is that the Internet provides accessibility anonymity and affordability so once upon a time if you were looking for some kind of sexual service you'd have been down a dark alley somewhere rather dangerous and um, paying money for it um, now as you say with the smartphones the sexual services whether that's pornography whether it's chat whether it's webcam whether it's hookups um, is available now at the click of a button, literally the click of a button, it has never been so accessible. Um, and also the vast majority of pornography is free, but we know that about 80% of pornography is what they call clickbait. So it's actually a way of getting people to the paid for services. Mm -hmm. So kind of the, the, the free funnel at the top is mahoosive and it's always trying to get people down to the paid for stuff. And that's often when people reach out for help. They feel they can control it when it's the mainstream normal porn. Doesn't everybody do that? And of course, millions of people do it recreationally without any problem at all. We're not worried about those people that don't have a problem with this, but there's a percentage for whom actually this really, really gets in the way of the life that they wanna lead. Okay, so Paula, can you tell us a wee bit about the Pivotal Programme? So um, I've been working as, as, as a general therapist, a general face-to-face -face and Zoom, of course, increasingly now therapist for, for many years working in this and doing a lot of group work as well, because I do think group work is really important in this field because it breaks through secrecy and shame. Um, but what we found out is, so, so I work at the Laurel Centre, but you know, unfortunately, a lot of people just can't afford our services. They can't afford private services. 
Laurel Centre is a private business, um, but I mean, you know, even as um, as Relate, which is a charity, you've still got to charge, um, and it is really difficult. So a lot of people can't afford traditional therapy, but also a lot of people aren't ready to access traditional therapy. They're not sure if it really is a problem. They're not sure how bad a problem it is or just the shame that goes along with this um, means that they, they're just, just not comfortable reaching out. So yeah, it was about, about 12, just over 12 months ago now, we launched a not-for-profit organization called Pivotal Recovery. Um, and the great thing about being a not-for-profit means that obviously we can reach a much, much bigger market. And for many years, I'd wanted to produce um, a really effective, anonymous, affordable, accessible using that AAA engine solution that people could could use themselves so pivotal is basically um it's a podcast based self-guided self-help resource that sounds like a mouthful doesn't it um but it is 60 podcasts 60 60 30 um, 15 minute podcasts and an accompanying workbook so the idea is that somebody will, will download it Bargain costs 75 quid or three times 30 pounds in installments. Um, and then you get the whole program and you listen to your 15 minute podcast and then you have an accompanying workbook to kind of personalize the content. And the 60 sessions um, go, they start off as a lot of kind of psychoeducational material. So I feel, I feel that's really important that people understand. Um, it then goes into a lot of CBT, cognitive distortion stuff, things about self-beliefs, uses a lot of motivational interviewing skills as well. Then we go into kind of developing a vision for the future and really being able to positively motivate people towards change. Um, then we have the session, which is the really practical nuts and bolts behavior change. And that is about identifying triggers, um, identifying your cognitive distortions, um, relapse prevention. What do I do when actually I'm sat there in front of a screen? I've got the Internet. Everybody's gone out. I'm bored. I'm alone. Maybe I'm feeling a bit anxious. I've had a busy day at work. What are the practical strategies? Um, and then we kind of move on into talking about positive sexuality as well, because we know that with sex and porn addiction, the impact on sexual functioning and on relationships, which is why, of course, we're, we're keen to partner with Relate, um, is huge. This has such an impact on partners. We know that a lot of people experience, a lot of men experience erectile dysfunction, they um, experience orgasmic difficulties, desire difficulties. Um, so we talk a lot about that in the programme as well. So it's a gradual pro program of kind of really building people towards behavioural change and but also looking at the underlying issues, helping people to kind of really consider, you know, was there trauma in my background? Are there issues in childhood that I really need to explore? Do I need to get do some stuff on anger? Have I got some anger management issues that I need to kind of work on? So we do all of the underlying issues as well. Not an alternative to therapy. Um, but hopefully it opens a door towards that. And for, and for a lot of people, I, you know, I really hope it will be enough. It will be enough. That's what that's the hope. And Paula, would it be suitable, say that you did get uh, six sessions with a psychosexual therapist, for example, could you do the podcast and the workbook, you know, in between the sessions to kind of bolster the, the counselling and therapy as well? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, the other thing I should say, we've been doing just coming to the end of a pilot study, so it works. That's kind of quite an important statement to make, isn't it? Um, so we're doing a pilot study with Leeds Trinity University um, and also uh, one of the guys at Nottingham Trent University. So we're, we're writing up the pilot stage information. That data should be available later in the year. Um, but the, the, the bottom line is it really helps in terms of emotional change, improving emotions, um, and also changing behaviours so that's important but yeah absolutely whilst this is a self-guided resource um of course if you can do it alongside someone else if you can do it alongside a therapist who's going to have just a bit more insight ask a bit more a few more questions give encouragement give support give a bit of challenge maybe that is really gonna gonna help this so um we've developed a um a clinician's guide and basically that document goes through each of the 60 sessions so it gives you a, 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 a clinician an outline of what's involved in that session tells you what the homework is that they will be doing in their workbook 
We've also set up Pivotal. Um, this this launches very shortly. Um, certainly by the time this goes out, we should be launched. Our new version of Pivotal on a nice shiny platform, um, which has for the workbook a share button. So the other thing that you can do is you can, you can share what you've been doing on your workbook with a therapist. So you can hit share, you can send all of the, the, the week, two weeks, whatever it is, sessions, homework, along to your therapist. So you can then sit there at the next session and work through it together. Therapist knows what the content is they've been working on. And also there's a kind of link to other resources as well. So yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I mean, I'd really love to do a pilot study specifically on the people that use it alongside a therapist, because I think that that's going to make it fantastic. And I think also if, if you're a therapist who isn't particularly trained in this area, um, then it's it's just going to give you the, the the information that you need as well. It'll be a learning learning process for both of you. Thank you. And um, speaking of shiny and new, I do believe that there is a pivotal up um, on its way. Absolutely. So first of first of February, um, the pivotal app. So you'll be able to. We, we've been working on a different platform because we need you to do that just to kind of prove principle and do the pilot study and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's been developed and should be launched on the. It should. It will be. It will be launched on the first of February. Um, so it'll be much easier to use on a mobile phone. And again, it's interesting, isn't it, that for so many people, the problem is the mobile phone that that has been a significant part of the problem and we're producing a solution on the mobile phone and i know that some people kind of say should we be trying to help people get away from their devices and the, the, of course there's an element of truth in that and we talk about that a lot on pivotal we talk a lot about pawn blockers as well and all that kind of practical stuff but actually th this this is where we are now that actually we use our devices for so many different things um, and it just provides that anonymity that so many people need and that accessibility so my hope is that people will listen to the podcast you know if they're on the train if they're driving in the car if they're you know where are they going for a walk in the morning they can listen to the podcast and then they'll be able to, you know, sit down and do their workbook. And um, there is a print version of the workbook still. So those that are old school can hit print and get a pen <laughs> and do that <laughs> writing <laughs> thing. <laughs> Paula, that's that's brilliant. Listen, thanks so much. And we're absolutely delighted to be partnering with you. So um, on our information page on www.relateni.org, we will have a link to Pivotal Recovery. And thanks very much, Paula. And I hope to see you soon. Very welcome.